How are we looking out there? I think we're about ready. You ready? Let's see. We ready? Judge, can I make a preliminary motion, please? Just a minute, Otis. Thank you. Um, just for the record, Judge, um, we are going to move to continue again. I'll follow it up with a question and another notarized affidavit, this time on the grounds of having uh, the absence of the material witness, Tanya Taylor. I did have an investigator go out and try and get her. We did attempt to subpoena her. We were unable to do that. Um, we did not find out from the Commonwealth that they affirmatively also did not have her until the middle of Detective Burns' testimony. Uh, we believe her testimony would be essential to the defense as it does establish um, what was going on in that apartment the day before of the incident as well as uh, a lot of the necessary context for um, <clears throat> any argument that we would have about uh, self-defense or justification. So uh, we are moving to continue based on the uh, unavailability of material witness. I understand there needs to be um, a notarized affidavit, but I will follow up uh, with that tomorrow. Well, I'll join that. Johnson. Your Honor, the Commonwealth again would object to a continuance. Um, Ms. Taylor, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Ms. Taylor was present when the bodies were found. Mr. Hayes was here to testify to that effect. Mr. Wilson will be here to testify to, and will be open to cross-examination regarding any incidents that followed up to the day of the shooting. Um, I also think that Ms. Taylor's, a lot of Ms. Taylor's testimony would be inadmissible hearsay even if she was here. Um, so for all of those reasons, I obviously object to the continuance. Motion considered denied, uh, but preserved. Bring him in. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Hope you had a nice break. Everyone may have a seat. Thank you. Your next witness, Ms. Gunsman. Mr. Taylor. Come up, call us Jim Sparks. Jim Sparks, please. He goes by Jim. Please, his first name is James. Okay. Mr. Sparks, good afternoon. If you'll make your way up to the witness chair, thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth? So help you God. I do. All right. And you may ask. Good afternoon, Mr. Sparks. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, if you would please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Sparks. I'm currently employed with the Louisville Metro Police Department in the Forensics Division in the Crime Scene Unit. I'm a crime scene technician. I've been employed there for over 15 years. And in that 15 years, have you worked as a crime scene tech that entire time? Yes, sir. And you were so employed on in May of 2016? Yes. Um, and so what are sort of the roles or responsibilities of a crime scene technician? Our primary role, and we will photograph, uh, videotape, uh, assist detectives in the identification of forensic evidence, uh, the collection of it, the packaging, processing, and transportation of all evidence. We work primarily for the Major Crimes Division, which is Homicide, Robbery, Special Victims Unit, and then we will also work for our divisions, our patrol officers, for property crimes if we need to be. Did you work on a scene in... Uh, May of 2016 at 1133 South Shelby Street? We were actually contacted by Detective Brian Royce on June the 3rd on that particular case uh, for an additional investigation. And so what, what, uh, what did you do at that scene? Uh, I had a new hire, uh, the uh, 
technician, Deborah Lane, who was recently hired by our, our department, and so I was a trainer. She was a trainee, and uh, I pretty much took her. She performed a lot of the tasks, and I oversaw, but we responded per the request of a homicide unit on that particular date, on June 3rd, 2016, that location of 1133 South Shelby Street, apartments one and two. As we got there uh, discussing the situation with the detective, we processed the apartment additionally, uh, photographed it, identified evidence that they thought was um, pertinent to the case. Uh, upon collecting that, then we transported that evidence back to the crime scene unit where we did further photography and processing for latent prints. And so what items were identified as potentially having evidentiary value. Yes, sir. And in my notes, I we, we collected uh, several items of, of blood from the scene, what we photographed, and would either cut out of fabric Just or collect with swabs. You may. 